So to the viewers, welcome to another session of English. My name is Mr. Wanyonyi, a teacher of English at Alansaru Nasran Primary School. As I promised you in the last session, we were looking at direct and indirect speech, which we didn't complete. And I've come today to have a continuation from where we stopped last time. First and foremost, we shall have a brief recap of what we looked at last time. Last time, I looked at the definition of direct and indirect speech. I also looked at the first rule that governs these two when you are changing a sentence from direct speech into indirect speech. A reminder, I say that a sentence is said to be in direct speech if we quote the exact words of the speaker. The exact words of the speaker. These exact words of the speaker are collectively said to be the speech words. You can refer to them as speech words or spoken words. These are the words which comes from the speaker's mouth. Whenever we quote these speech words, we are entitled to use the opening and closing inverted commas. These opening and closing inverted commas are normally placed at the beginning and at the end of the speech words to enclose the speaker's remark. And therefore, this one reminds us again of the following three items that when looking at direct and indirect speech, we need to put up the back of our minds, the speaker, the reporting them, and the speech words. The speaker comes from the word speak. This is the person giving a remark. The reporting verb determines the reporting sentence. And the speech words are the exact words, the actual words the speaker puts across. It is therefore important to note that as you put this opening inverted commas at the beginning of the speech words, the speech words should always start in a capital letter. And the closing inverted commas should always come immediately after the punctuation mark immediately after the punctuation mark. This punctuation mark depends on the sentence. If it is an interrogative sentence, as I said last time, the punctuation mark should be a question mark. If it is an exclamatory sentence, then the punctuation mark should be an exclamation mark. So today, I would like us to look at rule number two. Rule number one was present simple becomes past simple. That a sentence in direct speech, which is in the present simple, when changing it into indirect speech, 
also called reported speech, whereby we are reporting the speaker's remark, that sentence is written into the past simple. Consider a sentence John said, I attend the class. This sentence is in the present simple tense. John said, I attend the class. John is the speaker, said is the reporting verb, abbreviated as RV. I attend the class, these are the speech words, abbreviated as SW. So this said, as I said, the reporting verb determines the reporting sentence. So said shall determine the type of sentence we shall have as a reported sentence in reported speech. Since it is in the past, the reporting sentence or verb, the reporting verb in the reporting sentence should be in the past simple. And therefore, John will affect the pronoun I. Since John is first person masculine, he, I shall be replaced by he. Said, which is the past simple, shall affect the reporting verb attained to also be in the past simple. Therefore, attend becomes attended. And the sentence now becomes, John said that he attended the class. Similarly, it's important to note under this area that if the reporting verb if the reporting verb is in the present, future tense, or perfect tense, then the reporting verb in the reporting sentence or reported speech does not change. And I repeat, if the reporting verb is in the present tense, future tense, or perfect tense, then the reporting verb in the indirect speech does not change. Consider sentence, the conductor says <coughs> the bus will delay. Simple sentence. The conductor says the bus will delay. Maybe for some minutes, for some hours, for some seconds. So considerably, we look at this reporting verb. Bearing in mind that if this reporting verb is in the present, then the reporting verb in the reported speech shall remain unchanged. So in the sentence, the conductor says the bus will delay becomes the conductor says that the bus will delay. 
this will delay that tense has remained unchanged because of says which denotes a verb in the present simple or present tense. Similarly, if we are expressing general truth, universal truth, and a simple language, facts, then the reporting verb in the indirect speech <coughs> also does not change. Consider a sentence, the teacher said the sun rises in the east. This sentence is expressing general truth. And a sentence in direct speech expressing general truth, the reporting verb in the indirect speech remains unchanged. Therefore, this sentence being written into indirect speech becomes the teacher said that the sun rises in the east. Viewers, you cannot say that the teacher said that the sun rose in the east. It means at that point in time, the sun was rising in the east or rose in the east. Perhaps now, the sun will be rising in the west, which would be very wrong. So a sentence in direct speech expressing general truth, the reporting verb remains unchanged. Rule number two, present continuous tense becomes past continuous tense. If I mean to retain my sentence in John saying, I attend the class. If I'm to write or we are to write this sentence into present continuous tense, Viewers, it becomes, John said, I am attending the class. The sentence is said to be in the present continuous tense because of the presence of ing on the main verb attend. Therefore, when rewriting this sentence into uh, indirect speech, the present continuous tense, as I've said, becomes past continuous tense. Therefore, as a matter of fact, John shall affect I to become he, Said shall affect I am attending, am to become was, and the class remains unchanged. Therefore, a sentence in reported speech shall be John said that he was attending. The class. John said that he was attending the class. 
That is rule number two. What by present continuous tense becomes past continuous tense. What about past simple tense? That's rule number three. That past simple tense now becomes past perfect tense. The viewers watching at this moment shall bear with me that a sentence is said to be in the past perfect tense if we have the auxiliary heard. The auxiliary heard is used to remind us of past perfect tense. And as a rule states, any moment you mention or you introduce an auxiliary in the perfect tense, the subsequent verb should be in the past participle. Therefore, if we can retain our sentence, John said, I attend the class, in the past simple tense becomes, I attended the class. John said, I attended the class. Therefore, still John shall affect I to become he, said shall affect attended, and as the rule states, Past simple becomes past perfect. Our root verb here is attend. First of all, we need to get the root verb attend into past participle. The verb is attend. Past tense is attended. And past participle equally attended. Therefore, we are interested in the past participle. We should introduce heard immediately after the pronoun. In this case, I, which has changed into her. And our sentence therefore becomes, John said that he Immediately after he, viewers, introduce heard, and as the rule states, perfect tense should subsequently be followed by the verb in the past participle. The past participle form of attend is attended. So had attended the class. What if we may vary another sentence and say, the teacher said, I saw you at the market center or at the shopping center. The teacher said, I saw you at the shopping center. The teacher is the speaker, said the reporting them, I saw you at the shopping center at the speech words. The teacher shall affect I to become he, so shall remind us of the rule past simple tense becomes past perfect. And therefore, we shall consider the root word of so, which is see. See in the present becomes so in the past and sin into the past participle. We are therefore interested in sin, which is a verb 
in the past participle to be attached to her, to conform to our rule, perfect tense should subsequently be followed by the verb in the past participle. Therefore, our sentence in direct speech, the teacher said, I saw you at the shopping center becomes the teacher said that I, learners or viewers, now becomes he with the respect to the teacher. So, past tense becomes past participle denoted by head followed by sin the past participle form of the verb see which has emanated from so the past tense of see so the teacher said that he had seen i saw you either me him or her Choose one. So the teacher said that he had seen me at the shopping center. Let me hope that rule is equally understood. Rule number four states, now present perfect becomes past perfect. I'm sorry to have introduced this rule much earlier than that. This one should have followed present continuous tense. I'm sorry for that. But as a matter of fact, present perfect tense becomes past Perfect. Consider sentence Omar said, I have taken lunch. Omar said, I have taken lunch. Omar said, I have taken lunch is a sentence in the present perfect tense. And as the rule states, present perfect tense becomes past perfect tense. Therefore, Omar shall affect I to become he, said shall affect her to become her. And therefore the sentence, Omar said, I have taken lunch, becomes, Omar said that he have to become had taken lunch. Please note, don't confuse present perfect tense for past perfect tense. Present perfect tense becomes past perfect tense. However, past simple tense becomes past perfect tense. So don't confuse the two. Don't mistake this tense for that tense, nor this tense for that tense. Those are two distinct tenses. Rule number five, therefore, there was a mix-up. We can now continue from here, which could have been number four, to number five. Now, past continuous tense becomes past perfect continuous tense.
past continuous tense becomes past perfect continuous tense. If we can borrow leave here, that past continuous tense, for example, Omar said, I was taking lunch. Omar said, I was taking lunch. That sentence is said to be in the past continuous tense. And past continuous tense, as I've said, becomes past perfect continuous tense. As a reminder, under tense, past continuous tense is formed on the pattern was or were plus the main verb plus ing. However, past perfect continuous tense is formed on the pattern had plus been plus them plus ing. Past continuous tense was or were plus the main verb followed by ing. Past perfect continuous tense is had plus been plus verb plus ing. So in a sentence, Omar said, I was taking lunch, becomes Omar shall affect I to become he, said shall affect was to become had been, and this taking remain and lunch unchanged. Therefore, the sentence becomes Omar said that he had been taking lunch. Omar said that he had been taking lunch. From the sentence in direct speech, Omar said, I was taking lunch. Now becomes, Omar said that he had been taking lunch. To the viewers again, may I lead you to rule number six, which is past perfect remains past perfect. Past perfect remains past perfect. It does not change. Juma or Ayan for gender balance said I had done the work. Ayan said I had done the work. Had done reminds us of past perfect. And as I've said, that if the sentence is in the past perfect tense, the reporting verb in the indirect speech remains untampered. Therefore, in the sentence, I am said, I had done the work, becomes I am shall only affect I, and therefore I becomes she. And the sentence becomes, I am said that she had done the work. I am said that she had done the work. Ayan said that she had done 
the work, you realize that the reporting verb has remained unchanged. What has only changed is the pronoun she, pronoun I, which has become she with the respect to Ayan. To sum up on this role, we can now have what we call future simple. And future simple becomes conditional. Future simple becomes conditional, denoted by would. Future simple becomes conditional, denoted by would. What do I mean here? Consider a very simple sentence as the head teacher Say, I will travel tomorrow. The head teacher say, I will travel tomorrow. Presence of the auxiliary will reminds us that the sentence is in future simple. And as I've said, that future simple becomes conditional, denoted by would. Now, in our sentence, therefore, the head teacher say, I'll travel tomorrow, becomes the head teacher shall affect I to become he, will becomes conditional, denoted by would and viewers, it's important to note that whenever these auxiliaries are used, for instance, will, would, can, call, should, shall, may, might, among others, immediately after these auxiliaries, the subsequent verb should be in the present simple tense. However, any moment you introduce be, will be, will be, can be, could be, should be, shall be, may be, might be, just to mention but a few, the subsequent verb that follows them should therefore be in the past participle. In this regard, would is without be, therefore shall be followed by the verb in the present simple tense. So our sentence, the head teacher said, I will travel tomorrow. The head teacher affects I to become he, as I've said, will becomes future conditional, denoted by world. Travel remains as per the sentence structure, as I've told, told you. Tomorrow, adverb of time becomes either the following day or the next day or the day after. You can choose to pick one of them. That tomorrow becomes the following day, the next day, or the day after. Subsequently, therefore, the sentence should be the head teacher say that he, because of I, would will travel remains the following day. So in this case, a pronoun has changed, the auxiliary has changed, and the adverb of time has equally changed. 
So please note such notable changes when you are writing a sentence from direct speech, the actual words of the speaker, into reported speech when you are reporting the speaker's remark. NB, point to note. That when we start a sentence in direct speech with interrogatives, such as why, where, whom, what, whom, repeated sorry, whom is already captured, why, where, whom, what, when, how, among others, such sentences from direct speech changing into indirect speech or reported speech introduce verbs such as asked and reverse the order of the subject and the verb. I repeat, sentences in direct speech starting with such interrogatives as why, where, whom, what, when, how, were never changed into reported speech or indirect speech, then learners take note that these sentences were never changed into reported speech. Introduce such verbs as asked in reported speech. Then reverse the order of the subject and the verb. Consider the following sentence. Consider the following sentence. The head teacher said to me, Where is your mother? The head teacher said to me, Where is your mother? The interrogative I was talking about here is where. Remember, as I told you, an interrogative sentence is a sentence seeking for an answer, more or less a questioning sentence, and ends in a question mark. What is our role? Introduce, asked. So this place of said to me shall be taken up by asked. There is a subject, first of all, a verb is in form of an auxiliary verb. And your mother as the subject. And we have said that there is a reverse order between the subject and the verb. And as our rules discussed before, 
Where is your mother? This sentence is in the present simple tense. And present simple tense as, as power rule number one becomes past simple tense. Therefore, because of saying this is becomes worse. Because of me, remember last time when we were looking at pronouns. Me emanates from first person singular pronoun I. Sorry. I, objective me, possessive my. Or in this case, reflexive. No, possessive, but reflexive, sorry. So, I, objective, me, possessive, mine. Therefore, the sentence becomes, the head teacher asked, instead of said to, becomes asked, me remains, asked me, where? There is a reverse order between your and is. Is is a verb. Your is the object attached to the mother. Possessive. So where my mother was. Learners and viewers at large, in the first sentence we start with the verb, followed by the subject. But in the second sentence, therefore, we've started the subject and ended in a verb. What I said, that introduced, asked, and a reverse order of the subject and the verb. So the head teacher said to me, where is your mother becomes the head teacher asked me where my mother was. Consider the second sentence just to bear for, for the mastery of this concept. The school director said to me, What are you doing? The school director said to me, What are you doing? We've used me so many times. We can even say us. The school director said to us, what are you doing? This sentence, because of what are you doing, is in the present continuous tense. And as our rule stated earlier on, states that present continuous tense becomes past continuous tense. Tense. It's good to remind yourself of the same. Therefore, basing on this rule number one, as a point note, that sentences introduced with interrogatives, in this case, what, introduce, asked, and have a reverse order between the subject and the verb. Our verb here, learners and viewers, is the auxiliary R. The subject here, viewers, is you. So in, in direct speech shall have a reverse order. The subject to come first and the verb to go to the other side. So the sentence becomes therefore the school director asked us. This us 
emanates from we. And from we, we form us. And from us, you can go to our, if need be. But our center of interest is here. So, the school director asked us what? There are for you, because of us, becomes one. So the way. And are because of said or asked becomes one. The sentence therefore becomes the school director asked us what we were doing. You see, here it was are you verb subject. In a reverse order now, this is subject verb. Point number two to note is that sentences in direct speech demanding for a yes or no response. Sentences demanding for a yes or a no response in direct speech are changed into indirect speech by introducing such verbs as asked or inquired, followed by whether or if. Sentences or questions or sentences in direct speech demanding for a yes or no response are changed into indirect speech or reported speech by introducing such verbs as asked or inquired followed by whether or if. Consider this sentence viewers. For example, the teacher said to me, are you sick? The teacher said to me, are you sick? If I'm sick, automatically I would say, yes, I am. And the vice versa is true. So in this sentence, it is demanding either for a yes answer or response or a no response. What do we do? The position of said to is taken up by asked. And as I've said, these asked after introducing asked or inquired in reported speech, it should be followed either by whether or if. So, the teacher said to me becomes the teacher asked. Me shall automatically affect you. And this me, as I've earlier on told you, emanates from I. And a personal pronoun, the subjective pronoun I, becomes objective me. So me shall affect you to become I in the subjective form. And as per Concord, R goes with you. However, I, R should change into one. As per the first rule, present simple becomes past simple. But because of I, you cannot say I were. Now, because of subject and verb agreement, this R shall be taken up by was. 
And the sentence now becomes, the teacher asked me whether I was sick. That's a sentence now in reported speech that has changed from the sentence in direct speech the teacher said to me, are you sick? To become, the teacher asked me whether I was sick. Consider another simple sentence on the same note. Mother said to me, or to us, have you taken lunch? Mother said to us, have you taken lunch? Please note, the former rules we discussed should equally apply when it comes to this. Have you taken lunch? This one reminds us of present perfect tense, which we say that present perfect tense in direct speech becomes past perfect tense tense in reported or indirect speech. Therefore, our rule still applies. The position of said to should be taken up by us. As shall automatically affect you. And as, as I've told you earlier, comes from we, then us. So we shall take the subjective form of us, we shall be we. And her present perfect becomes had. And therefore the sentence in the direct speech becomes mother asked us whether we had taken lunch. Let me hope that area is also well understood. Not unless this is an area I would like to beef up more. Perhaps one may not have clearly captured in this area of interrogatives, in sentences in direct speech introduced by interrogatives, and sentences in direct speech which demand for a yes or no response. I can beef up more. That viewers, a sentence in direct speech introduced by interrogatives such as why, where, whom, what, when, how, just to mention but have you, introduced asked in the reported speech and reverse the order of the subject and the verb in reported speech, as observed in the sentence, the head teacher said to me, where is your mother? Perhaps the head teacher wanted to find out from the learner. He may have sent the learner home to call the parent in order to discuss matters of education or welfare of this child at school. Then. In this order, said to, as I've said, shall be taken by up by asked. There shall be a reverse order. In the first sentence we have is, which is a verb, and your, which is a subject. And as I've said, there shall be a reverse order. The sentence is in the present simple tense, as per the first rule, shall become a past simple tense. That's a reporting verb. 
Therefore, the sentence becomes the head teacher asked. Asked has taken the position of said to where my mother was. You realize in the second sentence, you are, which has been taken up by my, with respect to me, has come first. And was, which has taken up the portion of is, with respect to the present simple verb in the direct speech to become past simple uh, verb in the reporting verb has taken the last position. So there has been a reverse order. And in point number two, where we have said that questions in direct speech demanding for a yes or a no response are changed into reported speech by introducing such verbs like asked or inquired followed by whether, not the daily changes of the atmosphere. Whether of W, H, A, T, H, A, R. Alternatively, followed by if. We've considered two sentences. One, the teacher said to me, are you sick? Said to, to be taken up by us, I, to you, to change to I with respect to me, are, we should have changed to were, becoming was, with reference to I and subject and verb agreement. Therefore, the sentence becomes, the teacher asked me, whether I was sick. And finally, mother said to us, have you taken lunch? Said to, to be taken up by asked, have present perfect tense becomes past perfect tense. Therefore, have becomes heard. This you shall change with respect to us, as is objective. The subjective form of us is we. Therefore, the sentence becomes, mother asked us whether we had taken lunch. To the viewers, this is a very troublesome area, which you need to strictly adhere to the rules I've laid down so that you work out this exercise with the relative A's. Equally, it is an examinable area. And today, I would like you to work out or do for me the following questions with the reference to KCP papers. One, consider 2007, number 22. Consider 2008, number 24. Consider 2011, number 21 and number 22. And consider 2015, number 22, for purposes of revision, just to mention but a few. These are KCP questions tested in those years I've sampled for you out. Thank you very much for watching me. I beg to meet you in another session, God willing, if Corona shall not have taken you away from this world. Thank you very much. God bless you.